I think that uh, the problem is that just because you have a lot of transplant centers doesn't mean they're all successful. And uh, the ones that do very few transplants generally have a high mortality. And uh, in India, the main transplants that are done, in the north certainly more than 95% are of living related liver transplants, which half the livers transplanted from a live person to a recipient who's dying of liver failure. And there are people who, who have volunteered to give the part of their liver and unfortunately who died. And we don't know how many of these have happened. Now what has happened in America is that anyone who, if there's a single donor death, the program is closed. And, but in America, things are much more transparent. I'm not sure that that should be done, but at least we should know what the results of the transplants are in forms of donor and in recipient. Of course, the living-related liver transplant, I think, is only a second choice, and we should be doing many more deceased donor transplants which they do, I think Tamil Nadu's led the way. And I was told by Dr. Shroff, who runs the Mohan Foundation here, uh, only day for yesterday, that last year there were 200 donor death, uh, uh, donor sort of uh, donations after brain death. In Delhi last year, probably there were seven. And in Mumbai, Maharashtra, there were about 40. I think in 1990, when we started, and I was in All India Institute of Medical Sciences as chief of GI surgery, gastrointestinal surgery, and we thought that without liver transplant, gastrointestinal surgery was not uh, um, viable. And in those days, uh, there, it was estimated that at least two lakhs or three lakhs of people used to die in India every year from liver failure, many of whom could be saved by transplant. And at the same time in Western countries, there were 80% uh, success rate. And in fact, I did a program on television, on New Delhi uh, television, on The World This Week, where we looked at a poor lady who came from All India Institute who uh, had liver failure and he went back to All India Institute and died. Whereas Dr. Professor Roy Khan, who I'd worked with in Cambridge, had sent me a video of a young woman who had liver failure, had a transplant, and the next thing, image was, she was feeding the uh, birds in a park. So it was a great gulf. And we thought that we should try and do something about it. But the main impetus came from Rajiv Gandhi, who was the Prime Minister of the country then. And after one of the tours abroad, his tours, he asked the Health Minister why um, liver and heart transplants weren't being done in India. The Health Minister set up a small committee which consisted of two bureaucrats and me and uh, Dr. Bass a neurologist from uh, Mumbai and to find out why and we identified four reasons. One was that uh, there was no expertise. All the people, there was no one who was uh, capable of doing these transplants, heart and liver, in the country. Second was the cost would be very high. Thirdly, that uh, there was no law on brain death. Um, the law of, on death was that if the heart stopped, then only could the doctor declare death. And finally, the um, trade in human organs, especially kidneys, was rife. And within the law, that you have a poor person given one lakh of rupees and his kidneys taken out and transplanted to a rich person. So what we did, there was a Singhvi committee set up by the government, cabinet, and L.M. Singhvi, and uh, Dr. Singhvi and I, and two others, Dr. Singhvi and I helped to write the report. 
and we suggested two main things. One was that the uh, uh, trading should be punishable, cognizable offence, and secondly, that brain death should be recognized. And this power was passed through the Rajya Sabha. It was then went to the Lok Sabha and then they went to a select committee who made all sorts of objections, but suddenly it was passed. And in 1994, the Human Organ Transplantation Act was passed. In 1995, the rules were framed and tabled before Parliament and the first heart transplant was done by Dr. Venugopal in the All India Institute. After that, there were a number of liver transplants done. One was in Chennai, then two we did in All India Institute, but s and with bad results initially. But then, since then, liver transplant uh, centers have mushroomed in this country. And at the last count, there are 71 liver transplant centers all over India, but many have do very few and with very bad results, but there are a, a large number, a, a sizable number, which do liver transplants with very good results, which are unmatched anywhere in the world. And that is something to be proud of. And I think that having been in Indian medicine for a long time, that there are not many things we can be proud of in Indian medicine, but certainly the results of liver transplant in the best centers are really very good now. The problem with liver transplants is that, uh, as before as I said, that <coughs> in kidneys, they, uh, the poor person used to donate a kidney to the rich. And Chennai was one of the major uh, places in this country where this trade was continuing. And there were, uh, there were villages who, who were well known for um, having kidney donors, paid kidney donors. And uh, to, a, to a large extent, because of the law, this trade has stopped. But there are other kinds of uh, ethical problems. One is in liver transplant, the people who are, are supposed to be related. I mean, if you are giving a living related organ, the law says that you must be a near relative. A near relative is um, son, daughter, uh, brother, sister, father, mother. And in India, we've included wife. Or this is a near relative. If you don't have a near relative, we said that a person who's emotionally related to you can donate. And the emotional relationship would be verified by a thing called the authorization committee. And this is the loophole in the law, that a person says a Gujarati businessman comes to Chennai and he says that a person from Tamil Nadu is emotionally related to him. And the authorization committee passes that. Now this is something which should be checked by uh, in Gangaram, in my hospital, we video record all the proceedings of the authorization committee. And uh, the other kind of ethical problem is of touts that uh, you go to a, a doctor who refers a patient for liver transplant, gets a kickback of up to one to two lakhs, they say, of rupees for referring a patient. And this is very common in most centers in the country. Not all, but most centers. Uh, the affordability part, yeah, I think that it is very expensive and I think it costs between 12 lakhs in certain government hospitals, which do very few, to between 20 and 30 lakhs in private hospitals. But um, I think with time, this should go down because the cost is mainly related to drugs which can become cheaper. It related to the number of uh, the pay to the surgeons and the more surgeons there are, there'll be more competition and there'll be less cost. 
And I think generally most things which start very costly tend to come down in medicine once you get a more efficient system. I think the main challenge is to increase the number of uh, deceased organ donation. And uh, in India, the, it is the first huge number of road accidents occur, and it has been estimated that 60% of those have brain death. And many of these can die, can uh, donate organs. And Tamil Nadu has really shown the way by the government rules where they have said that there should be mandatory declaration of brain death, there should be required request that the doctor looking after the brain dead person must is required to ask them for organ transplantation. And there's a central authority which distributes these organs fairly, first to public hospitals and then to private hospitals. I think uh, this is a challenge. And the other challenge is to increase the number of liver transplant centers in the public sector so that uh, it becomes affordable to a lot more of the population. I think the future is very good. I think the future will be good because we now have expertise. We are as good as anywhere in the world. All we need is good administration and support for a very um, great project that the country should be proud of.